Welcome, one and all, to Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 440. I am your friendly neighborhood Oxhorn, here as always, with my suspenders set to maximum stun, but they are concealed underneath that shirt and this sweater and this coat, because it's a very cold day. It's a very, very, very cold day here in Washington today. Now, I realize that there is a big winter storm going on in Boston right now, so I really can't be complaining about the cold. <laughs> what were they calling it? There was snow bomb, a big snow bomb in Boston. I took out a, uh, uh, I was checking out a, a webcam over Wrigley Field to, uh, to, uh, see, to see what it looked like, and it didn't look that bad. Just little flakes of snow coming on down. But anyway, it's not snowing here, but it's still really cold, and uh, here I am in my office slash garage, which, as we all know, garages are known for their excellent insulation. Freezing my my booty off. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, got a great show for you all today. Because it's so cold, I'm drinking my scotch in a different way. We will be having scotch. Today we will be drinking some Glen Moraine Highland, Scalt, uh, Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Original Flavor. But we will be consuming it in the form of hot toddy. That's right, I've got... Tea, lemon, honey, ginger, cinnamon in boiling water with scotch. <sighs> Things that make the world go round, ladies and gentlemen. Firemaster says, I am in Boston. How is it? Is the temperature really cold? Is the snow really a bomb? We shall see. Alex says he's from Canada. I realize there are places on the globe that are <laughs> colder than where I'm at, right? That's that's a given. But in terms of... Did I say... Did I say Wrigley? I meant Fenway. Thank you, hardcore Trevor Tees. I should know this. I should know this. I spent so long in Diamond City. Oh. Lion the Great says... Uh, Toronto in here. Negative 18C. Oh my goodness. Evan with a nice tip. Thank you, Evan. Says, my garage is very well insulated. Has a heated floor, too. Well, isn't that nice? I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I've got a space heater down here. But, uh... It's not very useful when I've got a fan sucking all the hot air from my office out the window, which I have to do because <sighs> I don't want to smoke out the family. Mrs. E says, sounds yummy. It is very yummy. I'm really enjoying it. It's perfect for a cold, cold Seattle night. Though I have to admit, I got all geared up to not be cold on this show. <laughs> I'm wearing layers. I've got a space heater. I've got my hot toddy. And right now I'm sweating. I'm just really hot. <laughs> Maybe I'll cool down as the night gets darker. We'll see. Oh. All right. Time to light up this bad boy right here. Today we are smoking a La Aurora y Leon Corojo. Proud Soul Gaming says, I caught Oxhorn online. Woot, hey, Ox. I am loving the new Point Lookout DLC series. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm super excited that you guys are enjoying it as well as you are. So, you look just like your profile pic, says Dead Memes. Well, good. I'm glad that I'm not um, lying about the goods, so to speak. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of, I've been having a lot of fun making my Point Lookout DLC. I really enjoy these DLC weeks that I sit down to do. It's really rewarding for me. I enjoy piecing together a longer story that spans multiple days. Uh, and I'm having a blast. Now, the longest DLC series I've done so far has been the Old World Blues series. That was 15 days worth of content, not counting my days off. Uh, so yeah, half a month on Old World Blues alone. And I hope everyone enjoyed that series. I don't think this series is going to be quite a long. We're already on episode five. Well, I'm working on episode five now. 
No, no, I finished five. I'm working on episode six now. I published episode five this morning, so that's already five days worth of content. But we have finished the primary quest in the game, and we're going through the secondary quests in the game. Today I did my video on Ozymandias, which was a fun video to put together. And I think this marks the first time I've been able to recite poetry on, a <laughs> on an Oxhorn video. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Bob says, love everything you do, representing Washington State. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Bob. Anyway, so the video I'm working on today, <clears throat> which I hope to get done in time, I, I usually do, uh, it's a combination of Plix Safari and Marguerite's Shack, a spoonful of whiskey. Those are the two quests that I'm going to combine into one video for tomorrow. Then, uh, uh, I'm going to be working on the Velvet Curtain. I really enjoyed the Velvet Curtain quest. Probably one of my favorite quests in any of the Fallout series. It's been a blast to do. Plus, I just love anything related to pre-war China in the Fallout universe. I love learning all about that. Jay Zeno says, just uh, trying to give a little back for all the awesome content. Thank you very much, G uh, Jay. And then Ian says, finally caught a live stream. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much. Scott says, uh, question. I distinctly remember seeing James in the Point Lookout vision because I went there after he, well, no spoilers. Am I the one hallucinating? Um, you may... Or may not. Blake says, literally been watching you for days. Thank you very much. So here's full disclosure. Now, the reason I delayed <clears throat> um, Broken Steel was because I have not finished the primary plot of Fallout 3 yet. So as I had said in previous videos, the way that I was going to do this is I was going to alternate DLCs for games, but do them in order. So in order of release per game, Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, but then I would alternate games. So I did Old World Blues. The next DLC that I was going to do was whichever one was after The Pit, chronologically speaking, for Fallout 3. Well, the next one that was in line was Broken Steel, but... I didn't realize when I had said that, that Broken Steel, you, you can't play blo Broken Steel until you, you finish the primary plot of the game. So since I haven't finished the primary plot of the, the game, I moved on to the next one after that, which was Point Lookout, which I have been having a lot of fun doing. But there's a thing with the vision that's really kind of tricky. If you haven't finished the primary plot of the game, then when you have that big hallucinogenic flashback after touching the seeds on the um, <clears throat> the punga plant mother thing those bodies don't rise to the top you don't see Amata you don't see Moira you don't see the Wastelander you don't see Elder Lions which makes sense if you haven't even met Elder Lions yet why would it make sense for his body to rise to the top right so they cut that from the game if you haven't gotten that far in your gameplay. So since I hadn't, that wasn't there. In order to get it to work, I had to use console commands to complete those quests later in the game. I had to complete the Waters of Life and take it back, uh, which are some of the last quests in the game, using console commands. Once those were complete, I then recorded the footage and sure enough, the bodies floated to the top. Then I reloaded a previous save so that I didn't completely mess up my game save. But that's how I got the footage. Now, you said that, that the father's body is supposed to rise to the top after a certain event. I didn't know that at the time, if that's true, and I probably should have... I, I, missed, I basically missed a quest. I basically missed using a console command to advance my character through a quest in order to see that body rise to the top. So... To make, to, cut, to make that whole story short, no, you're not hallucinating. If that did happen, then um, it's, because, it's because I hadn't gotten that far in the game yet. So, no Metro today? Uh, yeah, no Metro today. Because today's a special broadcast. I have a buddy whom I met when I was working at a gaming company 
years ago. That's right, back in 2009, 2010, I worked at a gaming company. I was a uh, community guy and content producer. I did all of the writing for the game. It was a lot of fun. And uh, he went on to make his own gaming company, and he has just... He's getting ready to release his new game called Death Toll. And it's a pretty fun multiplayer Battlegrounds game, which I'm excited to play. And so we're going to be playing a little bit of that today. I told him that I would be ready at 7.30, which gives me another 20 minutes to enjoy my hot toddy. And get as far along in my cigar as I possibly can. So I'm looking forward to that. I've played a few versions of the game. He's in the middle of, he and his team are in the middle of making it. So he's constantly making changes to it, even right now, um, in order to make it as good as it can possibly be in preparation for its launch, which I believe is in February. I linked to his game in the description of this live stream if you're interested. So prepare for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, I am eager to get on through Metro. We'll probably get back to Metro next week, although there were many people who were saying that I should continue with my Fallout 4 live streams, my Fallout 4 VR live streams. And I know that that's a little controversial. Some of you loved it. Some of you really did not love it. <laughs> so maybe I'll play Metro. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Did you know that Father's Voice was performed by Liam Neeson in Fallout 3, says Corey. I did know that. That was, I think, probably the very first thing I knew about the Fallout franchise. I did not play Fallout 1 and 2 in my youth, as I should have. I deprived myself of culture when I was that young. I learned about the Fallout franchise in 2008, 2009, when Fallout 3 was in preparation for launch and when it was finally released. I was working at a company called Wii Game at the time. We were a media company about video games, and so I did weekly reviews of video games. I produced a lot of content about video games, and that's when I learned about Fallout 3, and uh, the only thing I knew about it when I heard in the news was that Liam Neeson was doing a voice. And that got me interested. I'm like, oh, I like ne Liam Neeson. I might be interested in this game. Of course, now, Liam Neeson is incidental to the Fallout franchise in my mind. I am much more excited about the lore itself. So, uh, yes, I did know about that, but it's a great, he did a great job. I thought he did a really good job of voicing the father in that game. Vinny Wee says, did Oxhorn already say end of dungeon steamer trunk? No, but there you go. I'm happy to oblige. <laughs> happy to oblige. Jacob says, I couldn't find your Patreon. Pardon me. And what's your details? Uh, well, sorry you couldn't find it. I link to it in the description of this live stream. It's also the first result when you Google Oxhorn Patreon. And I link to it in every video I publish. So you should have a fairly easy time finding it. But thank you very much for, uh, for your comment. Your beard is glorious, says Mr. Jeff Mann. Well, thank you very much. I do try. Uh, yes, so for those of you talking about Lonesome Road, never fear, Lonesome Road will be the very next DLC series that I do. Now, what I tend to do is after I finish a DLC series, I then spend a week or two resting, so, so to speak, uh, doing new various types of content. You know, I don't want, you know, I, this channel started as a Fallout 4 only channel. Well, that's not true. It started as a Scotch and Smoke Rings only channel. If you go back in time, the only episodes you'll see are episodes of this program. That's what this channel started as. But in 2016, it became a Fallout 4 channel, and I have a lot of subscribers that are really interested in Fallout 4. So I can imagine, even though they are very interested in the Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas stories, that they do have a longing for Fallout 4. So after every DLC series, I want to go back and do some videos about Fallout 4, and then other content for Fallout 3 and New Vegas unrelated to the DLCs, because Remember, there's the entire plot of both of those games that I still got to get through and all of the wonderful places that are unrelated to the primary plots of those games that are full of lore and, and amazing content. So, uh, yeah, I try to keep things, you know, interesting and spice things up a bit. But we will be doing uh, Lonesome Road next, after Point Lookout. After we finish this series, I'll spend a week or two or three or four working on other content before I start the Lonesome Road DLC. And don't worry, I will have an epic intro with originally composed music at the beginning of that one as well, just like I do with every one of my DLC series. I'm sad that I didn't do it for uh, Dead Money or for Operation Anchorage. 
I started those, both of those DLCs, before I realized how popular the series were, before I realized that this is sort of the, um, the pattern that I would be doing. Um, so, but I can't go back and do it again. That's one frustrating thing about YouTube is you can't change your videos once you publish them. Every now and then I'll make a mistake in a video that I want to fix and I'll, I went to my, uh, I've got a YouTube rep and I said, hey, is there any way I can upload a revision of this video? I want to change something. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's, I've mispronounced a word and he'll say, no, we can't do that unless, uh, unless there's some sort of copyright violation. So sadly I can't change it, but oh well, lots more DLC to do right, right? Right. <laughs> Blake says I died watching your intro music headache video. It was hilarious. Well, I'm glad my pain amuses. <laughs> I, I did have a, it was frustrating getting the music for my point lookout intro done, but I'm really pleased with the end result. I think it, I think that day I was worrying about it more than I really needed to. I was, I was, you know, finicking over the details. I was, I was getting, I was wrapped up in perfectionism, I suppose. The next morning after I had finished it and, you know, I was stuck with what I had, I listened to it again and I was really pleased with the final result. So I think it worked out. And user feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. So I think we did, we get, did, we picked the right one. Ah, oh, why haven't I done this before? I should have a hot toddy for every single show. It's just, it's great, it warms the soul. Spartan says modding definitely makes the games much more fun. And I wouldn't have played it nearly as much without them, but you can still have a fair amount of fun with the vanilla game. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I agree, but the, the thing is, with Fallout New Vegas and with Fallout 3 particularly, the games are almost unplayable without mods. And I don't mean in terms of content. I mean in terms of just technical ability. In order to get the games to even work on Windows 10 or on certain configurations, you have to install mods, including mods that sometimes come packaged with bug fixes that the mod authors decided were important. Jack with a tip says, really enjoy your videos and content. Keep up the good work. This question has been bugging me for a while. What faction in Fallout 4 is most similar to the Enclave? Would they ally with the Enclave? I don't think any of them would ally with the Enclave. I don't think the Enclave uh, Clave would, an would ally with any of them because they want power. All of those factions, well, most of most of the Fallout 4 factions, the Brotherhood of Steel in particular, and the, the Institute in, in their own way, want exclusive power and don't really want to share. Uh, so I don't think an alliance is even possible. But, but anyway, as I was saying, um, for some reason, many of these mod authors who are making the game functional on Windows 10 package with it a bunch of changes that don't make sense. Uh, so for example, I'm working on a video on Marguerite's shack right now, and inside we find um, Paw's fishing aid, which is a shotgun, which was cut from the game. But it, here it is in my game leaning against the shack, and I have no idea why that shotgun is in the shack. And I'm online researching, and I find out that it's a piece of cut content, and I realize that one of the mod authors who made a performance stability patch for Fallout 3 decided that he wanted to restore this cut piece of content from the game. And that's his prerogative, he made the mod, but it's really frustrating for a player like me who sees this item and then I, especially if I'm covering it, because I can't cover something that isn't in the vanilla game, otherwise I'm gonna confuse players. Um, like if I started covering this pause fishing aid shotgun, people would be like, what, I don't remember this from the game. Well, this is, how, why don't I find this in my game? And then I've got to explain, oh, it comes from a mod. It just gets much more complicated. So things like that happen. So it's, I'll sometimes get comments from people saying, well, I can't believe you're playing a modded game. And if you were truly interested in lore, you wouldn't have mods in your game. And you really need to do a series of unmodded lore playthroughs because I can't stand seeing mods in your game. And I, I can sympathize, but this is not 2008. This is not 2009. This is 2018. God, it's 2018. This is 2018, and uh, the games we recall, the gameplay we recall from 29 or 2009, is just not going to be the same. And and the environment has changed a lot. So I ca I can't get these games to work without mods, and sometimes that means we'll have strange hiccups, like an animation glitch 
when a character is shooting his weapon, or we'll find a shotgun inexplicably leaning against a shack that wasn't there in the original release. So, just bear that in mind. Hmm. Rollins says, Hey, I'm a New Zealand, uh, a fan from New Zealand here. I'm not part of the great cons, as far as you know, though I refuse to say. Question, what is the strangest encounter you've had in Fallout video editing? Uh, uh, okay. okay. So, the strangest encounter I've had while editing my videos of Fallout, or the strangest encounter I've had while shooting footage for Fallout while playing it in preparation for editing. That's a really tough question. What really tough? See, because what'll happen is I'll be sitting there shooting footage and something unexpected will happen. And I'll go, oh, I didn't expect this. This would be great for a video. And then I'll go and do a bunch of research on it after I shoot my footage, just so that I get the story straight in my mind and it no longer becomes strange. Because now I know that it's canonical, it's part of the lore, I've made a video on it, it's suddenly, it's, it's, it's lost the strange appeal. So when I think back and try and remember that moment, I don't recall what it was that really jumped up, jumped out at me and made me go, oh, that was strange. Ah, I'm sorry, I can't, I, I'm drawing a blank here, I'm sorry. Uh, Sergeant Beats says, what cigar do you personally recommend? Also, do you think there should be a BB gun in Fallout 4? Uh, well, uh, in terms of cigars, I always recommend people start with a, 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 a Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Romeo and Juliet. A Romeo and Juliet Cuban cigar, if you can, if it's legal for you to get a Cuban cigar. If not, you know, just a Romeo and Juliet brand with a mild wrapper. This is a dark Maduro wrapper. If you could get a lighter wrapper made, maybe made with a Connecticut leaf wrapper, that's probably going to be a good one for you to begin with. Uh, BB gun and Fallout 4? Why? Why? I mean, I, am I the only one who just completely ignores any BB gun you find in either New Vegas or Fallout 3? <laughs> Mrs. E says, uh, heated floor pads are 250 bucks on Amazon. Holy cow. Yeah, probably I'll just stay cold. <laughs> I think I'll just stay cold. Oh, Best Gold did his own personal edit of one of Ion Zool's Fallout New Vegas songs called Hail Caesar or Hail Kaiser. Uh -huh. uh, which he is imagining I use for one of my series. Well, thank you very much, Best Gold. I will download that and check it out later. All right. Supreme Pizza says, Hey, I know that last week during the stream you were struggling with your intro music, but after listening to that and then listening to the final product, I think you did an excellent job on it by adding the spooky sounds to cover up the weird notes and abrupt ending. Uh, well, thank you, but I honestly didn't do anything to it. I can, I can give all credit to the amazing musician whom I worked with uh, to get that done. But, uh, wow, my computer is freaking out here. Um, that was an older version of the song that he gave me. I had originally asked for some revision, and uh, the revision is what I was struggling with much later in that episode. The one I ended up using was the first version that he gave me. Okay. Okay. There we go. Had a slight technical issue to fix. There you go. What about Piper? Stop reading my mind. <sighs> um, here, here's a, here's a sneak peek. If uh, if you check 
If you check out last week's stream, you saw me editing a video on the fly while there were a few tabs of projects that I was concurrently working on, and they have the name of the videos that I was that, uh, of those videos in them. So if you want to see kind of a sneak peek about some of the stuff I'm working on, check out that video and you can see the names of the ones I'm working on at the moment. I can tell you that after the Point Lookout series is done, uh, I'm going to be working on a new episode of the full story of New Vegas. We'll be talking about finding New Vegas and speaking with Victor upon entry and then uh, going ahead and talking with Mr. House. All right, uh, so I told you earlier that my buddy, that my buddy has a game that we're going to be playing, and he wanted a five-minute announcement. I, I agreed to talk with him at 7.30, so we're going to be taking a break now to get ready for the game at 7.30. Hold on just a second. Man, I need a producer. That's what I need. You know those radio shows that they've got producers who deal with all of the, the background technical issues during the program? That's what I need, because I get distracted. I'm in the middle of thinking about something, <clears throat> and then I get distracted. Okay, so here's the deal. It's 7.26 right now. I need to give him a five-minute warning that I'm going to be starting to play Death Toll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the broadcast now. You're going to see a blank screen for a small period of time. I'm sorry about that. I don't mean to give you blank screens, but for a few minutes, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, I don't even know, you'll see a blank screen, and then I will come back with Death Toll. Remember, it's a Battle Royale type game. I'm going to appear on this island and then run around. So here's the plot, and, and we'll get into more later, but the plot is that there are four pieces of intelligence stashed on this island. There are four or five other players, and they're all trying to retrieve this intelligence and then get off of the island before they're killed. I am one of these agents. I have to run around the island and commandeer a vehicle to find these pieces of intelligence, kill all those who try to stop me, and then escape from the island. Are you ready? All right. Ending the broadcast now. We will be back in like 30 seconds or so. All right? All right, here we go. Oh, hold on. Let me light this first. Okay, be right back. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in <laughs> Death Toll. Thank you all for hanging tight and sticking with me while I do my transition here. So uh, let's go ahead and join a server. There we go. We're gonna hop on in here and then so, uh, I've got the developers on the line so that you can hear them talking. Uh, my buddy Tom, the guy who made this game. Yep. Tom, you want to say hi? Hi, nice to meet you. Hey, thank you for doing this, Oxhorn. You bet. So, I gave him a brief rundown of how the game is supposed to work. I said that there are four pieces of intelligence all over the island and that it is our responsibility as secret agents to find this intelligence and then escape with our lives. I thought that was a really great synopsis and uh, really captures it. So, yeah, that's basically what it's about. There's uh, four pieces of special thing. There's four special things that you have to get on the map. The map is littered with broken down vehicles, so you have to get those four things and be the first person to get off the island. All right. So those watching right now, those red dots on the map, that's where the intelligence is. I am this little green dot here at something called Inatech. In Inatech storage. Is that an Office Space reference? <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. That's great. I didn't notice that last time. Okay, uh, so now I have got to find some weapons and then commandeer this tank while not getting killed. So you're going to start here with nothing, uh, but there's stuff all over the place. So you're going to have to pick up your weapons and uh, items that you're going to need to repair these vehicles. Uh, so looks like you're in a place where uh, you're going to have a lot of stuff to pick up. So um, we're going to frantically start picking stuff up before you know everybody else does and... Because everybody's trying to accomplish the same goal. Okay, I got some boots. Do those actually help my armor, or are they just for show? 
I don't know. Do we have that in right now? Or the, eventually they will. We're still in progress on a lot of those things. Uh, the big deal is the clothing. The clothing helps you carry more stuff, and uh, some of it gives you armor. So uh, you want to be looking for, you know, shirts, pants, um, you know, okay. backpacks, vests, helmets. Um, parachutes are another interesting thing in the game. Uh, a lot of the items in our game are single use, so a parachute is an item that's a single use item. So uh, if you're going to get in an airplane to fly it around, you might want to take a parachute with you. But once you've used it, you got to find another parachute to replace it. Can someone shoot your parachute out while you're falling down? You can shoot the person from the parachute. Uh, I don't think you could specifically shoot the parachute out. All right, I've got to find instruments. So for those who are watching, you, you saw me go up to that tank. And before I can use the tank, I have to actually repair it. So I'm running around this warehouse, warehouse trying to find instruments so that I can repair the tank uh, so that I can get on my way. But once I'm in that tank, if I can get that tank, it's going to be very hard for people to kill me. So what we could do here for the sake of the broadcast is I could uh, I could assist you here, which would be a very unusual thing to, <laughs> to happen in the game. We don't, we don't we don't have the team mode in right now. Every it is all uh, free for all, but eventually we plan to have a, a team mode and probably a duos mode uh, in the game too. Um, a lot of our vehicles are set up where you could ride in um, separate seats in them. Like for example, there's a helicopter where one person could be flying and the other person could be operating the Gatling gun on the front, or a tank where somebody could be driving the tank and another person could be shooting gun on top, but none of that's in right now because we don't have the, uh, it's all in, but we don't have the team mode, so you can't get in your enemy's vehicle right now. Um, but that stuff will all come online fairly soon. You're at Innotech, because I can watch the stream, which actually, it, I think, is not so far from me. Uh, and you're looking for... Oil, am I going to need that? You may need it. Well, we'll just take that with us. The, <laughs> the a lot of the... Um, the vehicles, uh, you know, it takes certain types of items to repair certain vehicles. So as you get better at the game, you start to anticipate, like, oh, if I'm going to repair a jet, uh, I need to have these types of, you know, items on me so that when I come across one, I'll be ready to repair it. Uh, oh. you, you sort of pick that up as you play. Uh, the special items that are marked in the maps with the red circles... Uh, are always visible even if they're in somebody's inventory. So as soon as you pick up one of those items, you become a target because people can see the item moving around. Okay. So, th so there's some strategy in when you decide to pick up the items because people will start to chase you at that point. Uh, and I actually found some instruments here, so I could might be able to run over there and help you out. Well, I just managed to get my tank moving. Oh, there you go. Uh, I don't know if it can yeah. fire, but I am on my way to get some intelligence. I gotta cross a bridge. No, it looks like it can't fire. Yeah, so your damage level is too low to fire the tank. Uh, once you get it repaired a little bit, you should be able to. Okay. But I can still run people over this sucker, right? Yes. <laughs> right. I see you at Willow View, and I'm I'm slowing down, going uphill. <laughs> they, uh, they'll move faster once they're repaired. Oh, I see. So I'm, I'm in low performance mode. Yeah, basically, yeah. You're damaged and you're, you're sort of uh, limping along there. Is this map... Uh, is this a custom hand-tailored map or is it procedurally generated? Uh, a little mixture of both. Uh, we start with... with a system that lets us, you know, procedurally generate some certain stuff, and then there's a lot of hand placing of roads and the, you know, buildings and vehicles on it. Um, and then the uh, the pickups are, are random every time you play, and the vehicles stay in the same places. Well, I had an amazing tank, but I just found a horse. I think I'm going to gallop on over there. So the horses are kind of cool because um, they uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of uh, vehicles in the game with guided missiles. 
And, uh, you know, obviously you can't get a missile lock on a horse. And uh, fuel is a big deal. Like, you'll have to keep your vehicles fueled. But the horse can eat food instead of being fueled. Is food so, easier to find? Than fuel? Yeah. Uh, I think it's uh, it's probably about equal. But the uh, there's only one use for food and fuel you're kind of using all over the place. You know, so it's just sort of an alternative... Uh, you know, if you happen to have a lot of food on you, you know, that you're not using and you, you know, and you don't have much fuel because you've used it for something else. Like a lot of, some of the vehicles really consume fuel. Like if you're going to fly a helicopter around or something like that, um, it will, uh, really consume fuel. So I see on my mini map that I'm right next to a piece of intelligence. Does, does that, is that accurate? Is that real time or... Could that intelligence? Yeah, so so somewhere in that circle is um, the thing you're looking for, and they always spawn in the cities, like inside buildings. They don't ever spawn out in the open. Okay. So what it's basically telling you right now is this little camp that's next to you actually has two of the special parts in it, and somebody's down there. I, see <laughs> I could some see somebody. Somebody. I see a motorcycle moving around there, so you're going to see some action there. Time to check Discord chat. Oh! What? Ah. I hear something. Well, I saw someone, but sadly, I've only got a shotgun. Now, because I don't have, because I don't have the intelligence, they can't see me on the map, right? Yeah, uh, but your gun isn't loaded, so I would. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that before you try to engage this guy, like a quick reload on that. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I could be your producer. Yeah, you should be my producer. <laughs> <laughs> Help me with little issues like that. I saw, I keep, this guy on a motorcycle is a wizard. What the? Yeah, they, the motorcycles really move. Oh! <laughs> ah! did, he, did he take the parts away from you? No, not yet. Oh, man. I ran out of ammo. Oh. That was a lot of explosions. Oh, look at all of these parts. Was Justin? Was that you? Uh, I it, think who, so. Who did I kill? <laughs> okay, I've got. Oh, but you didn't have any intelligence, did you? No, no. They might have still been back at that base. Oh. But I can, I can still lose you for gear. Try to find and see if he had pants on him. It looks like you could use some pants. <laughs> <laughs> All I mean, right. Unless, it, unless that's your thing, I don't know. <laughs> well, I always, I always try to. Uh, <clears throat> I, I enjoy the breeze. I'm having a hard time finding the pants. There's so much stuff here. That's fine. Oh, wait, I found Maybe a helmet. And a backpack. The pants. Pants give you a lot more slots to carry things, so. All right, it was underneath the motorcycle, I think. Is that it? Okay, there we go. I've got a shirt. I got a shirt, right? Oh, I still don't have any pants. I'm just naked. That's all right, I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> <laughs> put your tight pants on. Let me reload my weapon. Oh! Where'd he go? Ah! Oh! <laughs> well, um, I think that killed me. That was a missile, wasn't it? Oh, but I'm not far I, away. It was an RPG. 
and uh, sorry, but you were killing me at first. So. Well, hey, that's all right. I understand. We don't have fragile <laughs> egos here. I'm just the air guy. Everyone wants to kill me. I don't get it. Now, let's say I get all four pieces of intelligence. How would I escape the island? Well, there's a... You have to find a vehicle that's capable of leaving the island. So there's a lot of boats around, and there's different aircraft. There's helicopters and jets. Uh, so the game isn't over. Once you have the four parts, you have to be ready to get one of those escape vehicles and leave. Um, your best bet is an air vehicle, but they're difficult to repair, so you might want a little foresight and, you know, having either collected the parts you needed to repair the vehicle or actually have the vehicle in your possession or maybe tucked away somewhere uh, before you get on. Uh, because without that, you're going to have a lot of trouble getting away because people are going to be trying to stop you at that right. point. because they'll know when I get all four pieces. Yeah, they'll know when you get all four pieces and they'll be able to sort of follow you on this map. So it becomes this wild chase for you to, you know, to get off the island. There's also a a, a day-night cycle here, and I think we're about to go into the into the night. So everything gets a little bit more interesting because you know everybody can kind of hide around at night. Well, I always really enjoy realistic nights. In fact, there are a bunch of mods for Fallout 4 that I always install that in, that increase the darkness at night because otherwise it just looks like it's bad. <laughs> I love this. I love this all. <laughs> we just uh, yeah, we just. Uh, we, we just amped up the darkness a little bit. We made it a little brighter uh, just for the sake of the stream because we didn't want you... Uh... Okay. Yeah, streaming black frames like... Yeah, stream, yeah, streaming black frames for a long time. Uh, we One of the things we're putting in is uh, different types of lighting. So and we don't have that 100% in yet. So uh, we didn't want to set up a situation where you would just be you know, fumbling around the dark for a long time. Well... So, that's probably good. I mean, I can describe bench, really well what's going on, but seeing it is, of course, better. Yeah, the uh, the darkness will go, you know, it'll be a lot darker uh, in the release of the game. Okay. <clears throat> Quite a few of the buildings have light switches as well. That helps. Oh, that does help. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, they're on the walls. You can turn them on. Of course, other people can, can see that the lights are on in a building, though, so that's... Uh, something else you have to consider. So, so far I've seen a shotgun, an AK-47, a Stinger missile. What's the full range of weapons available? Oh, there's several. Um, the Let's see, there's a, a bunch of rifles, a bunch of sniper rifles uh, in there. Uh, there is um, a heavy machine gun that you can get, a PKM heavy machine gun. Uh, there's an RPG. Uh, that is a, you know, like, like you would imagine an RPG, an unguided missile. The Stinger, if you're not familiar with, is an anti-aircraft missile. They become very important near the end of the game when somebody's trying to leave the island with the stuff that you want. <laughs> you know, if you, if you tech away a Stinger missile, uh, you can take the, uh, you can take the, you know, the aircraft down as it's trying to leave. And nice. without that, it's fairly difficult to stop the person from leaving. But there's a pretty big, uh, pretty big trade-off you have to make to keep one of those because they're all single-fire weapons. So you have to make a trade-off of another primary weapon, and they're all only you only get one shot with them. So um, it's kind of a gratifying thing when you get to the end of the game and you, you know, instead of holding two primary weapons, you've really only had one, and you have this, you know, stinger you've been waiting to use to the end, and the guy thinks he's going to win, and you let that missile go and you know take him down. Like it's a, it's a pretty great feeling. Because in his mind, he's won already. So which one is the one that's guided? Because some the stinger, the, the stinger, guided. the stinger missile is guided. The stinger yeah. missile is okay. So when I see a stinger, I know that's the one I need to get. Okay, so I'm assuming military bases are going to have much more gear. In the meantime, while you've been while you've been doing this, I've been trying to repair a helicopter. I'm looking for all the parts to repair a helicopter. Uh, and I was hoping to fly that in. <clears throat> well, I'm always uh, I'm always available for a ride. 
But this is the <laughs> this is sort of the flow of the game, right? Like you're spe you spend a lot of time. It's not like um, like a game like Battlefield where you know vehicles are constantly spawning and available to you. It's like you really are working for the vehicles that you're getting. You know, so when when somebody is flying that helicopter and you take them down with a stinger, like you realize that that's something that you know they probably spent you know five or ten minutes trying to get you know get running. Um, makes it sort of a, a, a stronger experience, you know, like the... I, I, I keep finding this tranny oil all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's never, it's like you could never really find the thing that you're, uh, that you're looking for at all. It seems like that. I'm okay. I'm not dead. <laughs> I crashed into a tent. Oh. Okay, I'm still alive. Did you crash the motorcycle? I did. <laughs> I crashed into a tent. Yeah, that's the problem. You can get around so fast with those things, but... Okay, someone's they're following They're me. really easy to, uh, to uh, pile up in places. They kind of get away from you. They're fun on the hills, like they jump and stuff, but if you land the wrong way or, you know, hit a tree or something like that, then. And you can actually get thrown from the motorcycle and the horses and get knocked unconscious. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. How do you uh, wake up if you're unconscious? It takes five or five or ten seconds or something like that. But take it's, my it's, Jeep? It's, you'll get... You'll get <laughs> You'll get thrown from the motorcycle, and uh, and you know get knocked off the ground for a couple of seconds in certain situations. I keep seeing somebody has some intelligence, and they're hovering around me. This red dot keeps changing on the mini map. I, <laughs> I, I caught your scent. I have to hunt you down now. So. <laughs> Revenge. Wait, no, you killed me last time, didn't you? Yeah, I felt bad about killing you on your almost escape from the island. Oh, when I like, the uh, last time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to heighten the drama, like spraying missiles all over. And... Does anybody have a fuel pump on them? Oh, shit. Um, I did, but I just missed it. I was trying to get the helicopter running at the, at the mixed, <laughs> mixed field over there, and I'm... Oh, I just took off in a helicopter. <laughs> I've experienced. Oh, you got it? <laughs> I'm flying it around. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody stole my Jeep. <laughs> Where is uh, where's Brandon these days? Do, do we know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> somebody knows. <laughs> well, fly the helicopter over there, J Jackie. Are you a pretty good pilot? Okay. Uh, Brandon, Brandon just got my pinata. Do you have the stuff? I'm going to the stuff. Yes, I have stuff. All right, we'll have a showdown. He's, he's officially a red dot. So Brandon, Brandon, do you have, have stuff too? Do you have a stinger on you? <laughs> this is the this is the key question right now because she's coming for you in a helicopter. In a helicopter, is the stinger yeah. the only way to take down a helicopter? Uh, no, but it's the easiest way. Like, okay. Well, no, I don't have a stinger. I'll look for one though. I can't be able to find one. You just like, ah! <laughs> oh, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, it's a tank! Yeah, I got a bloody tank. <laughs> I see. My ears are. I've never seen a tank hit a helicopter yet. I've done it. <laughs> oh, I've got a stinger. Where are you guys? By strife. Does the stinger strife, already. Okay. Does it already have oh. a, a ammo? Yeah, it's single yeah. shot. It's a single use weapon. But you know, I'm flying in here in a in a MiG uh, in an A10, and I'm gonna try to offer you some air support here. I can't remember what which which button is countermeasures. X. Which button is fire? I can't seem to fire the stinger. You have to get a lock. Oh, oh, oh! It's that's. Did it just crash? There's a solid tone and a lock. Okay, and I took off without fuel. That's uh, <laughs> and blew the jet up. Wow. Yeah. Brandon, you just have to point. So you're on your own, Brandon. <laughs> okay, I'm on my own. That's fine. 
I got this. <laughs> I think I'm okay because the helicopter landed. What, what just happened? Somebody killed me with a stinger earlier. Does, can the stinger lock onto human bodies? No, no, just aircraft. Just aircraft. There is a, the helicopter has a air to ground missile that can lock on ground vehicles, but nothing can lock on a body. Yeah, the stinger, you have to point it at the aircraft for a while to get a lock, you'll hear the tone and then yeah, you Yeah, there'll be a, so, a solid tone and then you fire. Yeah. Well, the helicopter pilot did a really good I don't know what that was. Someone, something. Ah! Who's in the jet? There's somebody in a jet? Um, but I can't get a jet? lock. Yeah, it's kind of doing backflips. <laughs> Oh, wow. Ah! Is, is there somebody in a jet on the stream? I no. saw it. Okay. There, there it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I just, uh, it's like a was, kite. We, yeah, we might have a ghost jet there. I was just in a jet and I crashed it. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, I can't seem to find this helicopter that landed nearby, so I'm just going to go back and get... <laughs> so you guys think night's better? If, it depends on if we had lights or not. Right. It's, uh, you know, that's... it's. Really oh, and it's, it only out. locks on aircraft, I see. But yeah, it only locks like on aircraft. You can't... Uh, there's the... Uh, see, this is a uh, use for the RPG. Okay, well, maybe I should so, go get an RPG, because all I've got is a shotgun. I'm not going to race a tank with a shotgun. Yeah, so there's a, a little bit of strategy in figuring out, you know, where you're going to be you know, where you're going to be and what you're going to need, you know, it's a, it's a good feeling though when you can uh, get to a point and um, have the things that you need to, to, you know, you know, do what you need to do, you know, so if like you've been planning on attacking a oh, hey. tank and you got the RPG with you, the RPGs are very, very effective <laughs> against tanks. They're also really fun to kill deer with. Yeah, killing deer, <laughs> killing deer with there's deer floating around. Since you have to eat in the game, uh, there's there's uh, and hunt. So there's deer float, you know, floating around in the world, and you'll have to. Uh... Oh, I cannot believe I took off without fuel in my jet. Like I was all set up. I was gonna rescue you. I was gonna fly in while that helicopter was coming in, and I was gonna just <laughs> take that helicopter out of the air for you. Doggone it. Doggone it, I lost him. Ah, I lost him. I need to find the other two pieces of intelligence. Where are they? Oh, they're on the opposite side of the map. Maybe I should just wing it, because after all, they're coming for me. Oh, my tank is dead. Ah! <laughs> No. I'm just ah. ah okay. All right. I think it's uh, anybody's game at this point. Did yeah. you take every weapon in that base? Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I just took the shotgun. Uh I've got a stinger, but I can't seem to find the other kind of missile. I've only got ten rounds left. <laughs> I don't know why I can't shoot anyone. I'm what so happened there? It was, I thought so I was dead. <laughs> I'm so bad at shooting people. <laughs> oh man! You, you, you got me the other night. Yeah. Oh no! You didn't even have a gun. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I didn't mention that I was completely <laughs> naked and had no, yeah. nothing going for me at that point. It was just running for my life. Like you gave me enough time to like get out the dragon off and like shoulder it. That was awesome. <laughs> it's because I get like so like excited. I see someone and then I go, go crazy with the mouse and I can never. Yeah, aim. that's a that's a that's a common dysfunction. Like, it's not not unique to you. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you, had, you had all of my favorite parts too. I know. 
and everything. As long as I can get something that moves, I don't even care if it can't fire yet. Oh, oh. Yeah, a lot of times people say to us, like, you know, oh, well, you know, this vehicle is better than this or whatever. And it's like, yeah, if, if you got it, <laughs> you know, like if it's, if you happen to have one of those, because that's kind of the, you know, a big part of the game is just struggling to get, you know, a vehicle running. talking business there like you know you must have a very specific plan about what you're doing <laughs> well I don't I, I've got I, I've got a shotgun a pistol and a stink yeah you're doing good I was just looking at your Oh, the tank has headlights. Oh, that's nice. Oh, why am I having such a hard time with this hill? Oh, because I haven't repaired it yet. Uh, uh, oh, and I can't do anything. Right. So I need to find a way to go around. If I can find a more level road. Whoa. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> Someone took my favorite helicopter and we're set. <laughs> Didn't have some blue books on it? <laughs> All right, you guys. It's, it's a dawn of a new day. We need to be killing each other. Yeah, I haven't been paying attention to deaths. How, how many people have? Have there been a lot of? I know I've killed two. And then I got killed. You killed once. three. You killed three. You can hit. You can hey, hit. Chris. Hey, yeah. Hey, um, hey, I can see that. I seem to. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing better than I expected. I Finally got a helicopter together and this time like the common mistake is you get the thing running, but you don't put fuel in it So you, you'll get off the runway And then you run out of fuel and, and crash. Yeah, I run out of oh, fuel and no. crash which is, But I got a uh, I got a helicopter fuel. Have you ever flown the helicopters? I did once and I'm not good at controlling air vehicles <laughs> I can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> Hit your map for a second. Let me see where you are. I'm going to fly out and meet you. Okay. Shall I wait here by Ford Echo? Ford Echo? Is that where you are? Yeah. I'll get out and uh, search for better weapons. Oh, no! Okay, let's not kill him while he's out at Ford Echo. Do you have your stinger on you? Because I, I want to know that before I come over there. <laughs> <laughs> I do have the stinger. I do. It's like the... The fear of the air air pilot. It's the the stinger missile. But I promise not to use it if I see a helicopter. Ooh, a Dragonov. You're welcome. Yeah. So and you took down my here. Jeep like I was like butter. Did you wow. see me hiding in the bushes? No, but I saw you as I was coming around the bend, and then I started to try to run you over, and uh, <laughs> just oh. shredded me. There it is. Ah! Those were not intended for you. Okay, thank you. 
<laughs> so the question here is, do you want? Do you want? Why don't you fly the helicopter out? I, I, I will. And, uh, but I'll embarrass myself, but I'll try. I'll try. Or you can stinger it down. Like which one? <laughs> How about I try flying first, and if I can't, okay. then I'll, I'll stinger it down. It's all yours. All right, now, thanks. when we get the, the, the team mode playing, the other person, you can actually switch to the gun. If you get inside and hit F2, get inside of the inside of the vehicle and hit F2, you hop to the other seat. This is oh, the, cool. the, ro the rotary gun seat. Hold down the trigger there. You can... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, didn't so, but uh, when we have team mode running, well, you'd be able to have two people in there doing that. So get in the, uh, you can get in the other seat and fly. You can't fly from that seat, yeah. Okay. Here we, here we go. Uh, all right, so down is up. Oh boy! All right, here we go. Oh, there we go. Yep, just gonna embarrass myself for a minute. Yeah. No, oh, you're in the air. There we go. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. Now forward is uh, backwards, or is backwards forwards? Oh, and I'm going up and down. You wanna, yeah, kind of p pitch it forwards if you wanna fly forward. <laughs> I'm on my side. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Forward. <laughs> Crash. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll do the stinger next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you have the briefcase? Yes, I had the briefcases. No, now we got a problem, yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone's going to converge on that spot. Yeah. i got to get there as soon as I can, but now I don't have any ammunition and weapons. Ah! Weapon, weapon, weapon. RP. There we go. But now I don't have any ammunition. No ammunition. Ammunition. <laughs> so to the stream, uh, I, uh, I'm really, I'm good at Fallout. <laughs> uh, when it comes to uh, other FPSs, I'm learning. I'm learning. There. There we go. So as the game goes on, we should expect the cities and or the little towns to become stripped clean, huh? Uh, they'll uh, they'll eventually rebuild themselves. Oh, they do. Yeah, because the game can keep going for a long time. Because you respawn. So there's a mechanic for how they get uh, refilled, basically. There's all these people poking around the crash site trying to figure out. <laughs> trying to figure out where, where that stuff went. Well, it looks like all four pieces of intelligence are in the same location now. Oh, someone just found him. Mm. Yeah, I gotta hunt him down. <laughs> okay, do I have any ammunition? I don't have any ammunition. <clears throat> are there plans for um, being able to use your your rifle as a melee weapon like if I wanted to attach a bayonet or just pistol whip someone yes yes we're, we're planning melee weapon yeah we hope to have a minimum a knife uh, but uh, definitely like either budding rifles or bayonets would be great oh it looks like somebody found the parts oh Oh, it's moving south. Oh, wait, no, it's moving to the bridge. So now everybody, the, somebody has all of them, so uh -oh. the trick is to stop them from leaving. No! Well, the only weapon I have right now is this Jeep. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. 
Oh no, a rock. Oh. There we go. I hear our boat running, so this is a bad sign. I hear our boat in the distance. So well, I'm guessing the there's somebody with four parts in a boat, which is a... We, we may be minutes away from the end of the game. Someone Here. needs to get in that plane. Yeah. Like, at some point, you know, fly, get flying out there and intercepting him is going to be the only thing we can do. Well, I'm on the water. Oh, I see him. Is he on a boat? Oh! Why do I feel like I'm going to get sniped in a second right now? <laughs> Oh, no. Ah. oh, that's bad. Yeah, he is almost out to sea. Oh, no, is he turning around? No, he's heading out on the river. This is our last chance. I think with my 9mm, I'll be able to cap him. <laughs> I got the dragon off, but I'm too far. Like, I'm too, too far to take a shot. I think he's going to make it. <laughs> I had these great ambitions of uh, launching my Jeep through the air and crashing into his boat. <laughs> but then I I tried to swim in it and I flooded the carburetor. It's always nerve-wracking uh, passing through the bridges with the boat because yeah. so many people are going to camp it. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got this one. He's There's no... Unless somebody's, somebody's got something in the air. Has anybody got anything in the air? No. I just launched an no. RPG at him. It's going to hit him about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> If nobody's got anything in the air, this game's over. Like, he's totally going to take it. Yep. Unless he runs out of gas. Is it possible for the boat to run out of gas? Yeah, actually, they're, yep. they're gassed up, so he would have to do something really dumb. <laughs> this one's actually lower than that, to run it out of gas. Do they start with gas in it? We should probably... Well, that's an interesting idea for them that. to, yeah, you know, to, to at least you have to have a can of gas at least. Uh -huh. That would be oh, the worst. Right. No! <laughs> you finally get there, you got it's, 15 people on your tail. It's and scary. Like, yeah, it's scary because everyone's chasing you at that point. Jets have a knack for peering out of thin air around here. No one's in the no one's in the air. Oh, okay. Woo. They're good. So, so that's so that's pretty much it. Like that's pretty like like uh, I don't think we're gonna go into another round here, are we? No, 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 I don't uh, think so. No. Yeah. Wow. So he has to go all the way off screen. Yeah, yeah. He has to. You have to go a long way. You could. I mean, we've had several games where you know somebody will come out with a boat and uh, inter, you know plane and intercept the guy or something. They're a little hard to find because there's a lot of open water out there, but. Oh! Ah! <laughs> so, so I guess uh, my my overlords because I failed in the espionage mission. Yeah. Assassinated. Yeah, the explosive implant in your skull has. <laughs> in my molar. Yeah. It's been blown up. Well, all right. So there you go. Death toll. Is this like the official uh, the first official live stream world yeah product debut this is i mean we've done our own but i mean this is the first time where somebody you know some somebody real has streamed it so that's <laughs> so that's really cool and i appreciate that and we're still in the beta phrase and you can play the beta for free uh now so if you go to our website and sign up um it's likely you will get a beta key and uh once you get that you get the game for free forever so it's oh. like uh the beta phase is going to end here pretty soon but if you uh go to the website and sign up uh, you know, eventually we'll we'll send you a beta key. All right, I've got the website linked in the description, but uh, what is it in case for some reason? Deathtollgame.com. Deathtollgame.com, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks, Tom, and thanks, everyone else at Digital DNA uh, for letting me do this today. It was a blast. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Brandon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. I got to get back to work on my video for tomorrow, so you have a pleasant evening, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.